Uh, are you allowed to have TV in your house if you only watch news and select programs? Okay, so TV in the house, if you're using the TV as a screen to, uh, to watch Torah uh, and educational programs for, for kids, which in essence is Torah, or let's say if you're learning a language or math, you want to use a TV as a screen, you can use that. It's no different than a computer. Uh, but to watch the news, absolutely not. To watch uh, programs like a, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, all types of, uh, you know, public television programs, absolutely not. If you want to use a screen for educational purposes, uh, which is, again, to learn Torah lectures, you can watch this lecture on your TV, you could watch a, uh, you could put the uh, uh, YouTube version of this on your TV, you could uh, watch other lectures by Rabbi Mizrahi or other uh, uh, righteous people on, uh, on, on that screen. Again, whether it's a computer screen or a TV, it's the same thing. Or it's a phone, it's all the same thing. Uh, you want to use a, that uh, that program to watch a education, let's say uh, I don't know, uh, teach math or a, uh, some type of mikzoa, uh, uh, some type of uh, uh, profession, uh, educational program for that. Yes, that that you can use a screen for that, but to watch public television like news that's full of lashonara, absolutely not. Uh, a uh, public programming like TV shows, absolutely not. In fact, the Stipe Lagaon says it's idol worship. Stipe Lagaon says it's idol worship to do such things, to bring such uh, toy vine to a house. So again, if you use a screen, whether that screen is a computer screen, an iPad screen, a phone screen, a, uh, or a TV screen, that you are putting programs on it that you have control over, and again, it's only that, then you could, uh, you could have a, uh, uh, you could use it for that, because again, the whole world is, uh, is, is learning more to lot today on a screen, much more than they are learning from books. Uh, Torah has become accessible for people because of the screens. But to go and uh, think that that's giving you permission to watch uh, television, to watch TV, sports, uh, news, uh, all types of uh, stupid shows, no. There's no permission for doing that, no. Uh, no leniency and no nothing. Uh, and uh, again, I, I have in my, in, in my house, we have a uh, screen, which is, there's, there's no cable in my house. It's simply a screen that's a, uh, a computer screen. You have it on the wall. And from time to time, my uh, Rabbanit puts a specific program, a Torah program, or some type of educational program for my kids to watch and uh, get educated. Sometimes they'll be educated from the books. Sometimes they'll be educated uh, from uh, words she'll teach them. Sometimes she'll, they'll be educated by the screen. So we use a combination of all of it, sometimes more, sometimes less. But nonetheless, of course, we use a screen uh, for that purpose. But to go and give yourself or your children access to the uh, so-called uh, secular world, free world, to watch a screen and watch news full of Lashonara, full of gossip, full of filth, full of immodesty, full of all that junk? Absolutely not. To watch movies? Absolutely not. To watch TV show? Absolutely not. Simply nothing is allowed on TV. So that, that's on a regular uh, 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 cable. Uh, so, uh, it, 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 so therefore, there's no permission for it. But again, the screen in itself, you can use a screen for good or for bad. The screen you can use for watching Torah. The screen you can watch, you can use it to, I don't know, hit a terrorist in the head or something. You can use a screen for a couple of good things. But to watch TV and public TV and movies and things like that, no, nah, there's no permission whatsoever for such a thing. That is bringing what's called toeva, which is disgusting uh, in the eyes of Hashem, into your house. And that's forbidden according to all opinions. According to all opinions. And in fact, even the, uh, the, uh, uh, the permission to use the screen uh, to watch anything is not necessarily acceptable by everybody's opinion. There are some, uh, some righteous people, some tzaddikim that say even to teach, even to teach Torah, you shouldn't do it with a screen. Of course, in the world today, uh, we see that there's more good coming out of this than there is bad from learning from a screen. Uh, but nonetheless, there are some opinions say that even for that, it's not good. And uh, there's a certain, a certain uh, part of it that's 100% true. Why? Because when you learn from a book versus when you learn from a screen, they're two different things. They're two different things. Why are they two different things? Because 
If you learn from a book, first of all, it's usually much more difficult. When something is more difficult and you end up overcoming it, you end up remembering it and, 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 and really uh, 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 connecting to it much more. Versus when I give you guys a lecture, I'll give you, I don't know, sources that took me years to acquire, all on a silver platter in a matter of a couple of hours, and 9 out of 10 things that I said, people are not even going to remember, and almost 10 out of 10 things that I said, no one's going to write down. Uh, you know, so it's, 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 so it's, yes, a lot of work came into it, give you a lecture, you have the information, but in essence, it's a, it's not something that always sticks with people. Usually most people get one, two things out of the entire lecture that really impact them. And the rest of it is as if it never happened, but it's still better than not watching the lecture because it's two, three hours that you're not uh, doing something wrong and it's still educational and it's still informative and it's still good, but Again, the stuff that's really going to stick is usually one of two things. Whereas when you read something, you'll usually, you'll, you'll acquire a lot more. You'll usually acquire a lot more. But the problem is most people are not going to read. Either they're not going to read at all or they're not going to read all the time. So studying by video is something that is uh, uh, extremely valuable. On the other hand, the, 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 the downside of videos is that sometimes we'll see imagery in the videos that actually instead of doing what the objective is which is to give us an imagery to uh uh to to give us a sense of what's happening and and, and try to make us have a uh, emotional uh, uh reaction to certain things sometimes those very same images will actually have a negative effect on us and i'll give you an example that i saw in myself now most people think of Mount Sinai when they think of Mount Sinai if they are Bale Chuva or if they uh, simply uh, uh, were not uh, uh, extremely observant their whole life and they watched movies and so on when people think of Mount Sinai they think of some film that they watched that gave them an imagery of what Mount Sinai looked like and what the Exodus looked like so it looked like a huge group of people came out uh, and, uh, and a huge group of people gathered in Mount Sinai. And in essence, it's a, uh, so when you think of it, I think of it, uh, you know, it's a, uh, uh, the movie that I saw, I don't know, 30 something years ago was the 10 commandments. I don't recommend for anybody to watch it, but nonetheless, that's the movie that I saw 30 something years ago. Okay. So now I think, okay, that's 10 commandments. There was a mountain. There was a lot of people there. Uh, there was Moses with two tablets that he's holding in his hands. And that's in essence a visual that's still stuck in my head. Now, initially you think, oh, this is good. So at least you have a concept of that. There was a lot of people and it was a mountain and this and that, right? Until you start learning. Once you learn Torah, you start realizing that those images are actually ruining you. Why? Because those images, in essence, what they're doing to you is that they're putting that that event that happened in mount sinai in a comprehensible format that you can not only visualize but you could really truly understand the scope of it so in essence what you're seeing is you're seeing that there is a leader that looks like an older man and then you have a huge group of people that's somewhat equivalent to what you see in a, a uh football stadium uh, or a uh, baseball stadium. You see, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people. So in essence, that imagery is not really what happened. Why is that important? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us in the Torah that what he did at Mount Sinai, what he did to take us out of Egypt is a memorable event, so much so that we have to be reminded of it every single day, because it is something that's incomprehensible. It's beyond our logic. No human mind could truly understand it without being there. And even if you were there, it was literally impossible to comprehend the massive scale of what took place. So when you have an imagery of 30, 40,000 people that you saw in some film, okay, versus what really happened, which is literally millions of people, millions and millions of people you can't see the end we're talking about miles miles of people like it's 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 something that is not comprehensible to a human being because you've never seen such a thing what it's like is in the movie 
it's like a bunch of people went to a football game and a bunch of people left so you see them going in there's a lot of people in line getting out of the cars you know all excited they're all sitting in a stadium cheering you see it roar noise and so on then everybody leaves at the same time a little bit of traffic for a little while and then everybody eventually goes home a few hours okay that's in essence comprehensible what happened really in the torah is not comprehensible it's not comprehensible why because it's miles of people miles of people and it's literally something that the human mind cannot comprehend and it what it's like is as if the entire state of new york okay the entire state of new york we're talking about millions of people probably 20 million people in new york i believe now okay all of them all of them decided to leave new york and go to texas that's what happened that's what the, that's in essence what happened or i don't know if people make makes people happy everybody in new york all gathered they all agreed to leave which is in itself incomprehensible for people they all agreed to walk no driving they all left their house took a little baggie some food in it and just started walking hey Shmuley, how are you oh hey joe and everybody started walking and before you know it there are literally millions and millions of people all at the same time walking endlessly all the way to florida can somebody comprehend such a thing no no it's not comprehensible hence the reason why kadosh Baruch Hu tells us to reminds us to remind ourselves of this one-time event that never happened before will never happen after until mashiach comes when there's going to be even bigger miracles but it's something that never happened to any other nation no other nation even claims it as a false story that these types of things happen and needless to say all of those people arrive at the same destination and all saw the words of god and we're talking about miles and miles of people forget about the number people usually try to say oh yeah it was three million at least it was five million it was 10 million forget the number the number is not comprehensible to people think about distance think about distance think about from let's say for example it takes you i don't know takes you uh, uh, uh an average person walks four miles per hour that's where an average person walks okay four miles per hour so that means that every mile is 15 minutes so imagine to to walk to walk from the beginning of the camp to the end of the camp it's going to take you more than an hour some say it was actually going to take you somewhere closer to three hours to go from beginning of the camp to the end of the camp it's it's not something and that's just the people that's just the people and all of those people are all walking together with their kids with the babies with everything for years together this is not something that's comprehensible so the massive scale of Yitziat Mitzrayim the massive scale of Mount Sinai was only ruined by the imagery we all allowed into our minds so from there those sages are 100 percent right because if you asked the Chafetz Chaim if you asked the the uh the, the Baal Shem Tov if you asked uh, Rabbi Akiva all of these things that happened to us they would give you an imagery that's even clearer than the one that I just gave you because the Torah was much clearer to them and it would be even more incomprehensible to us because it's just so massive and the only reason why we think we understand it is because we saw an image of it but that understanding is limited excuse me is limiting Hashem it's limiting Hashem why it makes the miracle of Mount Sinai the miracle of the Exodus smaller than what it was and thereby not as influential not as extraordinary not as magnificent and not as obligatory for us to appreciate for us to live by because it's okay it's a football stadium what's the big deal I see football stadiums all the time that's in essence the, the human mind it's like, okay so I go to soccer games all the time there's a lot of people there what's the big deal so okay so all of those people went to Israel big deal why because the mind the Yetzirah saw in essence people go to a soccer match 
and thinks, okay, so they went to Mount Sinai. What's the big deal? No, that's the problem. That imagery ruined us. And it's important for a person to learn the Midrashim and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Gemarot and all the different teachings about what actually transpired without always adding an imagery to it. Uh, because again, the imagination that you have naturally is much more developed than the imagery that's available out there in the world. And the imagination of a child, for example, can reach much, much further places than the imagination of an adult, because the adult is full of, is uh, seeing a lot of things in their life that limit their imagination. So that's why when you tell all types of supernatural stories to a child, it's very easy for them to believe, it's very easy for them to be influenced, it's very easy for them to accept it and to, to just be amazed by it. Whereas when you teach some of these things to adults, are you sure about that? What's the source for that story? Can you give me a source for that? Like as if it makes a difference. If I tell you it's in a book or it's not in a book, I mean, what do you think? I'm in the business of making stuff up? For what purpose exactly? So that's the thing, is that people are constantly don't want to believe something because their imagination can't get their head around it, so they want to justify a way how they could justify not to believe it. And that's un unfortunately the problem because sometimes we have certain midrashim that uh, if you have tainted your mind with this world too much it's impossible for you to believe just for example learn about the midrashim of what happened in the Bet Mikdash. what happened in the Bet Mikdash? how many people were actually killed how many people lived there before the destruction the average person that reads those midrashim simply no nah, nah, it's all parables it's all analogies it's not real automatic automatically arrives at the conclusion that it's all not real it's all imagination it's all some other message that nobody ever knows because it cannot be humanly possible that that many people lived in jerusalem but the reality is that the only reason why we have those beliefs that are lackings of of, of belief is because we tainted our minds with other things so the less the less imagery the less uh, uh things you put in your mind the better quite frankly if somebody has the ability to just listen to my shulim versus watch them, I would say that's also uh, uh, even preferable. Even preferable. Why? First of all, I'm not exactly uh, such a good-looking man that you need to look at me exactly. And second of all, even more, more, more uh, uh, serious, is that perhaps the words may reach even a deeper place in your imagination if you don't have any visuals distracting you especially if you're watching me on like a uh, facebook and you have all these comments and all these distractions on the screen uh, it's it's you know usually these things hurt the imagination that's why i always tell people watch the uh lectures if you want to watch them live watch them on our on our app or watch them on the website bh dot live uh that's all you know you can watch it there on your desktop instead of watching it on facebook we're still doing a facebook live because there are always new people that join us because of the of the social network but nonetheless if you are already a uh, a, a subscriber you're already a student you're already a friend you're already a supporter don't watch on facebook watch on the app or watch on the browser bh.live that's the best place why because there there's no distractions there's no texting. There's no nothing. There's no way uh, 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 distractions, and, and and I think it's it's also very valuable. Again, in regards to the questions for this particular uh, series, uh, we'll have to figure out a way of how to get questions from those other terminals. But the other lectures that there is no questions there, it's best to uh, watch it on those other places. So again, there is a great value uh, for uh, the using a screen. Uh, for the sake of learning Torah, but that does not give us any permission to use that very same screen or other screens to watch things that are forbidden. But even what's allowed, we have to be very careful with because sometimes what's allowed can end up hurting us nonetheless.
uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we have an event coming up here in uh, South Florida for anyone that wants to come. It's going to be at a uh, uh, resort called Bonaventura. For anyone that wants to uh, attend, uh, it's free of charge, but you have to RSVP. RSVP to uh, leah at bezrotashem.org.